Yes, uh, good morning students. Uh, this is KV Ramesh, Anthropology faculty, and we are discussing about previous year questions. So for our today's question, the scope and the relevance of sociocultural anthropology, which came in the exam 2023 for 10 marks. So before attempting any question, so there are a lot of dimensions for each concept. For say, if you take that sociocultural anthropology, it has various dimensions. So you can see history and the evolution of this branch. So history and the evolution of this branch. The second one is definitions and various branches. So sub branches, we can call it as a sub branches within this branch and research strategy. So relationship of sociocultural anthropology with respect to other subjects such as sociology, psychology, so political science, history, economics. And finally, relevance of, relevance of this branch. So these are all the various dimensions related to sociocultural anthropology. So here, so you could not write all these things. Here you asked only the scope definition and the scope and the relevance so next year you might uh, focus on another issues like evolution of social cultural branch that might be given for 10 marks sorry or various research strategies followed by the social cultural branch or social cultural anthropologists in their field so this might come for the 10 marks so that means whatever you know about that branch you should not write it so that means our focus of attention while writing should go on the whatever they are asking. Simply you can see here. <clears throat> so it is scope. So it is the scope and second one is the relevance of anthro uh, social cultural anthropology. So now you can see. <clears throat> so here the question seems to be very easy, but uh, so there are, it, it can vary. So it's not the direct concept. So everybody present like that. So it is a individual of freedom is there. Relevance means, so you should understand the knowledge of social cultural anthropology, how it helps us to resolve everyday problems or the current problems faced by the humanity or humans, how this social cultural anthropology help us to resolve. That means identification of the problems. Okay, so what kind of concepts are useful to resolve that problem? And that is individual specific. Right? So that's why it is somewhat tricky question. So now you can see. So emergence regarding to that. See here the keyword is what is social cultural anthropology. So we are talking about the social cultural anthropology. The second one is the scope and third one is the relevance. Right? So first one, this social cultural anthropology haven't been present in anthropology. So it, which was coming to being after merging two different branches that is social anthropology and cultural anthropology. So social cultural anthropology as a branch which came into being in 1948 after the efforts of A.L. Kroiber to merge these two different branches into a single branch. So he coined the term social cultural anthropology because this social anthropology, cultural anthropology, they are dealing about the same uh, subject matter. So instead of having distinct branches, he asked that all the anthropologists to come under the single brand that is called social cultural anthropology. So and he, so while talking about the scope, in general, you can write. So in general, you can write. So social cultural anthropology, scope wise, it extent its purview of study to the primitive societies, recent societies and civilized societies. So which are all present across the time and space. So this is the simple scope of social cultural anthropology. So if you write this in general, you will get less marks. So you will get less marks. Why? So the scope should be defined through anthropological point of view. That means you can take various anthropologist definition in which so what extent uh, this definition is covering study of sociocultural anthropology that you have to mention. So then you will get 
decent or good score. If you want I, I score, so for this question, you should not write like this generalized statement. You have to take it from the anthropologist view saying that it has universal scope. The scope is always universal across the time and space. So that things I am going to show you. So 1970, Michael C. Howard, 1989. So Conrad Philip Kotak, 1993. Marvin Harris, 1999. So these people were defined sociocultural anthropology. From their definition, we will retrieve the scope of sociocultural anthropology. The first one you can see. So Gopal Sarna, he said that the sociocultural anthropology is a branch which is study of relations and pattern of life among all societies. So as seen through their institutions. So here you can see that. So this Gopal, according to Gopal Saran definition of sociocultural anthropology, the study extended to all the societies. That's why it is universal. And it studies all the institutions ranging from marriage, family, kinship, so economic activities, political activities, as well as so religious practices and beliefs, mythology, folklore, etc. So that's why, so this is also, according to Gopal Saran, the scope is universal, which covers all the societies. So next one is, so Michael C. Howard. So he defined social cultural anthropology as a branch of study of social, symbolic and material lives of humans. So he never talk about any particular point, any point of time or any particular society. So it is generally about study about all humans, whatever they created in the form of social, symbolic and material culture. Understand? So this is scope also revealed that, so it covers universal scope. So because it covers all humans. And third one you can see, so Conrad Philip Kotak. So he defined social cultural anthropology as study about society and culture describing and explaining about social and cultural similarities and differences while considering the diversity in time and space. So here you can see that in time and space which reveals which has universal in scope. So space wise it covers all the societies which present on different continents. So if, if a society is made by humans so that society fall under the scope of anthropology, social cultural anthropology. So time wise, so we take it from since the culture beginning, since the culture beginning. So who created culture in the first time means we can start from Homo habilis. So Homo habilis, they were the first tool users, first created by the tools by Homo habilis. Those are all the rock tools. So this is about, so after studying this one, so, social cultural anthropology re uh, revealing about universal, generalized, and particular cultural and social features of humans. So, how all the humans are having commonality, how generally humans have tendencies, how a particular society people behaviors are differed or marked from the another human societies. So, these kind of universal, general, particular, so behaviors of the humans can be identified after studying the social cultural anthropology. So this, uh, this also revealed universal scope. And finally, if you take Marvin Harris, so he said that it is the branch of universal, holistic, comparative and relativistic approach in the study of human life. So the branch which applies these four methods, relativistic method, comparative method, you know, holistic method, as well as universal in nature, so those branch of study of humans is nothing but social cultural anthropology. So this is how you have to show the scope of social cultural anthropology is universal from various authors point of view. Understand? So if you write generally, you will get very less marks. So the same question attempted by the multiple people, but few people get very good score means. So their approach of answer writing is different than the other people. So now relevance. So now relevance. So relevance means, first of all, you should understand the relevance of physical anthropology, the relevance of social cultural anthropology, the relevance of archaeology, relevance of linguistic anthropology. That means these are all the major branches. Why, when we done study about these branches, 
we come to know, uh, we come to know that various knowledge so this knowledge is applying on everyday problems to solve that problems that is called relevance the first thing is so understanding human diversity so human diversity is in the form of so cultural practices and beliefs so cultural practices and beliefs So we know that concept of cultural relativism through which what we come to know that every society is unique. Every cultural belief systems are unique. That means it provides inclusiveness, appreciation of diversity of knowledge created by the human beings for the same problem. So we can understand the human diversity of cultural beliefs and practices by using the cultural relativism tool. The second one is understanding different societies through their social structure. So every society had created certain underlying principles to organize the various social groups. So if you take that social stratification concept, it reveals that different societies made arrangement of various groups into their uh, society by using various principles. If you take that in Indian society, we had fixed various groups into Varna hierarchy or caste hierarchy. So here the principles, that means every here we have that principle of binary opposition. That means every society which, which made by various distinct groups, these groups are hierarchically arranged one after another or superior or inferior. That means so by understanding the, uh, after studying the social cultural anthropology, so whenever you come to know that any alien society, so you will easily look for what is their society and their structures. And you will come to know that what kind of uh, di different belief systems and practices they are followed. So this is how it allows us understanding the human diversity. So since their origin. So we are all the cultural animals, but still we create different cultures. Okay, so now we can see globalization and cross-cultural interaction. So nowadays, this is the problem. So whenever the knowledge or economy or any kind of, so interactions happened at the global level, that is called globalization. That means easy or free flow of knowledge, investment, ideas, any kind of things. So that is called globalization. Because of this globalization, okay, so the identities, arising so earlier identities got uh, you know arising new identity formation so in a cultural group the old identities got removed and new identities they are acquiring so the new adjustment is required so globalization led to the cultural adjustment for new identities so these things how it happens so could be uh, easily understood by studying this social cultural anthropology. So international, because interactions are increasing, interconnectedness. So by using this one, global governance, so diplomacy, and you can see that uh, even, so uh, global governance, diplomacy, and business also. So MNCs were there, they span different, different continents and different countries. So this business uh, understanding, diplomacy, uh, no, engaging in uh, no, uh, multilateral organizations, global organizations, global governance, dipl diplomacy, all these things could be very easier when we understand the cultures are different. So the diversities of cultures are present. And next one is policy and development. So anthropologists have so abode of knowledge, abode of knowledge about the local cultures. So these local cultures, so these people are engaged in government agencies as well as NGOs to work with the local people. So through which they got so diversities of knowledge. So this knowledge they used to create a policies. For suppose, so the caste people are different, tribal people are different. So tribal people belief system practices are completely different. 
so when we go for the generalistic approach whatever the schemes we introduce for the caste people they might not get succeeded in the tribal people so that means to reach the development for the tribal people we need di different specific approach which confirm their so uh, no beliefs and practices understand so this is how the policy for different segments or different marginalized groups and everything could be possible when they have differed uh, culture and practices so this is how anthropologists play a crucial role formulating policies for different marginalized groups to bringing development in their life so next health and medicine so each culture they have their own systems of so uh, diagnosing treatmenting that means they have their belief system towards the diseases and they have their own indigenous medical systems for the treatment of this diseases so these kind of uh, as long as they believed so their own systems are superior they not, they they won't go for the modern medicines so here anthropologist engaged to, con uh, to uh, convince them so that means our modern medicines should reach into their tribal societies or any kind of distinct cultures but uh, so those practices should confirm their socio cultural beliefs so this is how health and medicine how different societies perceive what is disease and what kind of medical systems they have how we introduce our modern medicines into different societies that could be studied by using the health and medicine and you can see that bringing the awareness during the covid time it was a lot of efforts done by the various social scientists social scientists including anthropologists and next one is conflict resolutions and peace building so if you see that in manipur it is burning so it has been burning since last one and a half year so you can see that here the mighties as well as uh, you know kuki tribes so they are conflict each other uh, re regarding the resources that means conflicts identification the source of conflicts the solutions for the conflicts so by providing a good solution for the conflicts so they can build a peace between the kukis as well as mighties so that means so when we have uh, pursued the different societies have different needs aspirations through which conflicts arise by fulfilling their needs and aspirations we can bring peace and a harmony between the distinct groups they are inhabiting in a same area so these kind of things also done by the anthropologists only and next one is the migration and displacement so most of western asia so western asia has been boiling since last decade so many people they migrated from west asia into europe that means wherever possibility is there they migrated so this migration that means the causes of migrations so the people what kind of problems they are facing after migration into the new lands for their adjustments so because their cultural systems are differ and the host country or host society cultural beliefs are differ so how these people are facing adaptation issues in that new migrated area so those issues are easily dealt by having the socio cultural anthropology knowledge and here so education and curriculum development also so that means the generalistic knowledge is not suitable different people have different aspirations they have cultural beliefs so while introducing knowledge uh, introducing education in tribal area various committees recommended introduction of the tribal culture tribal beliefs which attract more number of students for the schools the uh, you know retention ratio attendance of the school increases when when we introduce their own culture apart from so generalistic uh, curriculum so that means the curriculum should be inclusive in nature which has to cater all the people requirement not only a generalistic perspective and economic anthropology so ranging from local markets national markets as well as global markets and apart from that the consumer patterns everything when we understood properly we can increasing our gdp as well as economic power of a nation or economic power of any society so this is how and not only that so growth and development if you take that growth and development so population growth or demographic growth so these are all 
basically influenced by the biological capacity, but still the socio-cultural belief systems are play a key role. Socio-cultural beliefs play a key role. That means what kind of diet, what kind of uh, shelters, what kind of activities, economic activities they followed, which decides growth and development of individuals, different genders, different societal people. So if you take that, the consumption of more fat, so the persons may be look taller, so bulky in nature. Consumption of more protein food, they looks like a thin in nature. That means the food habits comes under the cultural pattern, okay, which decides our growth and development. So gender, consumption of more iron-rich foods made you know, uh, less presence of anemia among the females. Okay, this kind of. So that means our growth and development, which was influenced more or less by our uh, social cultural beliefs and patterns and a demography a society a demography means birth rate death rate so reproduction rate all these things we will see increasing in population or decreasing in population so when a society is experiencing too much population growth we will analyze our uh, the, the the society social cultural belief system and making awareness of you no know, uh, high population related problems we can change their belief system through which we can reduce the population. So overpopulation, high population is always problematic because it increases unemployment, poverty, so resource, uh, uh, resource, resource curtailment. So this is how various problems are arise. So this is how the knowledge of social cultural anthropology help us to resolve various problems that are all cur uh, currently faced by the humans. So it is open-ended. You can write n number of. So see, the last two points I borrowed it from the physical anthropology. So you can borrow some uh, relevance in linguistic anthropology, some relevance in another chapters also. Understand? So this is how you have to present. So you have to get more marks. So this is all about for today. Tomorrow we will start with another PYQ.